This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast. It contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Beep, beep. Drive yeah, my, drive my, my car. car. Car, car, car. Uh, question off the top. Are you familiar with the song, Drive My Car? Uh, no, but I'm familiar with the song, Drive It Like You Stole It. Yes. Okay, we'll get to the drive my car thing in a bit and the naming of this film. But uh, this is the first Japanese film ever nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. And initially, that like struck me as like, whoa, really? How? And then I remembered that the first like non-North American movie to Parasite. win like, just happened. Yeah. Yeah, it's famously like an an all American sort of celebration at the Academy Awards. I yeah, like it, so yeah, only one foreign language film has ever won, which, as you said, was uh, Parasite. That explains, I guess, why this is such a long shot at plus thirty three hundred. It has the third to worst betting odds. Does Drive My Car to win Best Picture? Only Don't Look Up and Nightmare Alley have worse odds. It's also nominated for Best Director, Ryosuke Hamaguchi, Best International Feature Film, and Best Adapted Screenplay. I'll tell you what, though. It's uh, it's probably my new favorite to win Best Picture. Right. I fucking loved this movie. It's, it's your favorite of these? Yes. Wow. Okay. It's, yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was very good, and it... This is interesting, because you watched it yesterday... I saw it a couple days earlier, and it's more like grown on me yes. over having seen it. So if you initially loved it, then that's I think you that, might be over the moon in about twenty four hours. I think that I think that like because I'm doing this so soon after watching it, I'm placing myself a couple steps ahead. But but like this is the movie that I'm going to think about the most moving forward. So that is what I have said to other people who have seen this film, which is like this one sticks with you. Mm -hmm. This one you think about. And want to talk about, so I'm glad we're doing this right now. Uh, it is about an actor and director who is married to a screenwriter who uh, they're in. They're probably in their like late 40s, maybe early 50s, something like that. And she, I mean, if they're that old, they look they, they, they fantastic. Look fantastic. <laughs> yeah, uh, she dictates her story ideas to him during and after sex, and he learns that or i guess we learn but he's always known that she stoops younger guys in the business but he never says anything to her about it for reasons unbeknownst to us she then dies suddenly and he takes a job in hiroshima directing a play that he was doing right after she died and he'd kind of choked while doing and you think it's because like he just lost his wife they'd also lost a child that they talk about at points uh, a big thing for him though is he drives a Saab turbo and he has the lines of him and his wife on tape his wife doing half of them and him do it back like if you've seen once upon a time in hollywood the way people would just like record the lines and then practice the lines and he drives and goes through the line. So he takes a job in Hiroshima, and one of the things that he requests is that his hotel be a little far away from where they're working on everything so he can do everything in the car. That's not only like for his lines, but it's cl clearly like a therapeutic yeah. thing that he does. They say, no can doesville, baby doll, because... They tell him it's because of like some stipulation and some rule that they have, but he's it's got because one one of the previous like directors that they had hired or they actors said killed had somebody. killed somebody while driving, so that they put in this like provision that they always provide a driver to the person that they are, they're hiring. Which did you buy that? No, not really. Right. So he has glaucoma, glaucoma thing, and yeah. and I need to check this. I have some inappropriate Googles as a result of this. <laughs> Apparently, he also has a DUI. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that from watching the film. But everybody who's talked about it and people who have reviewed it say like, it, it's like he doesn't push too hard on it because he has glaucoma and a DUI, and he understands that that's probably why. Uh, m was that lost in translation or something? Because Maybe. I don't think that I ever saw anything about a DUI. I was going to go back and watch it, but this is a three-hour film, a three and I don't know where movie. it's going to pop up. I'll, I'll finish summarizing it real quick. So 
he in some like kind of twisted way hires a young man that was working with his wife who we're to presume was fucking his wife and he hires him for or he casts him for like a role that this guy shouldn't be hired for and honestly this guy wouldn't even be going after the play but he's been canceled so he's trying to kind of remake his career so probably in some not totally pure of heart way he hires him and he works with this guy he also takes a liking to his new driver who's a young woman who has experienced some loss herself and basically the film is albeit very slowly him coming to grips with like what was his relationship with his wife and who was his wife this guy's a very tortured soul quite understandably uh I, this was not my favorite, probably not close-ish to my favorite of this batch. I put it like in the middle of the pack, but once it really gets going, and famously, this movie does take very historically long to get going. It is. It, it's it's very very good to great. Yes, uh, it, it's a three hour movie and it does drag at points. Yeah, and like I think part of that is because by design you're not supposed to know what's happening. In, at various points in the movie and like you know that can be frustrating and it was frustrating and I was like god damn but I think that this is the most well put together movie of any of the ones that we've watched so far like it has the best story it has the best central theme it has uh incredible cinematography I'm not going to say that it's the best cinematography yeah, because not even nominated yeah so but it, it looks beautiful like it is presented in a very beautiful way and like a lot of the, the the places and the locations are awesome. Um, just for me, it's like it's this is like the the best full package that I've seen so far. So this, so he drives a red Saab 900 Turbo, and the original story had him driving a yellow Saab 900 convertible. This, these, I don't think it would have worked as well. This is really a, a bunch of sob rockers making this <laughs> I was, uh, movie. Oh, one of my notes is they should have called this movie Sob Rock. Sob Rock, yeah. The fa- I, I got at least like 14 to actually probably like nine retweets on that bad boy. But um, it was changed to a red Saab 900 Turbo because it complemented the Hiroshima landscape. And I agree. It did like... It did look very good. I mean, if we want to, uh, did you notice at the very end, uh, the like the final scene? There's a parking lot scene. Did you notice? Did you pick up on, on that? I did notice that scene. Yes, but I did you notice like it. the uh, <laughs> the the contrast? Oh, what are, are all the other color cars like? Different colors. All of the other cars are the exact same car. They're all Hyundai SUVs. Wow. And they're all red. Are they're all white and silver? Uh, Hyundai SUVs, and then there's the red Saab. What do we think happens to uh, Yusuke? Well, so, like, at the very last scene, again, we have spoilers here. Uh, the very last scene is the the chauffeur coming out of the supermarket, gets in the car, his car, he's not in there, there's a dog in there, and she dri- is, is presumably driving home. So either, like, the one thing that you can you can take away from that is he either gave her the car. Yeah, he don't have that car anymore. He gave her the car, or they're together. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, like she's driving home, and, and he's at home. I think that... I think he gave her the car. The age gap is too yeah. vast, and although, like, who knows, maybe something about, like, his relationship with his wife, where, like, she was banging younger people. I, di- I didn't get any sort of romantic No, uh, I mean, like, they could have, too. if they wanted to, to deliver that, they could have. But I do, I do, like... three hours to sneak in, like, one true. flirtatious glance. I was wondering if it was going to happen at the scene where they visit her, the site of her old house. Yeah. And they didn't go that route. I'm glad that they didn't. But Same. I think the door is still open. It's uh, possible. Like, they shared a moment, and, like, he's clearly a guy who values, and he says this in an earlier scene, that, like... Uh, you know, there's more to like love than sex and like finding out about somebody than sex. And like, uh, you know, I, I think that that was like maybe a, an establishing building block for that relationship. So, 
But also the fact that there's a dog in the car says there's no way they're together because they acknowledge the cleanliness of his car is very important to him. But he also loosens that that boundary because he allows her to He's smoke like, in the car. You know what? If it's a little chilly, why don't you spark that thing? That's right. Why don't you pass up? I can't do it. Gross. I love the no. sign. I love the scene of uh, them smoking in the car and they put it through the uh, the sunroof. Yeah. The best scene, though, for me, and this is like my issue with the movie, and it's not like the movie's fault, but the two best characters in this film are the wife and Koshi, the the canceled actor. Mm-hmm. Though those are the two characters that obviously the wife is like the heartbeat of the film, even if her heartbeat famously ends. Uh, 40 minutes in. By the way, we, let, let's quickly note. Oh, yes. Opening credits for this film take place 40 minutes into the film. 40 minutes into the movie. Yeah. And it like, and it is, you said it, you said it correctly. You were like, and now we begin. Yeah. And that, the movie does not like really begin until 40 minutes in. I like touched my, I, at once I finally understood what they were doing. I was like, is there some Adam McKay shit going on? Why is there text on the screen? And I was like, <laughs> God damn. These look like their names. And I like put, I th- think if I didn't do this physically, I emotionally did this. I put my hand on my chest and I said, heavens, like <laughs> goodness. I love the boldness of it. And by yeah. the way, I would be remiss if I didn't point out. I wrote down Adam McKay joke because I wanted to make the same joke. It's like random sh- random text was popping up on the stream. I was like, what am I fucking watching an Adam McKay movie? The two films that we're doing uh, this week are Don't Look Up and Drive My Car. And Drive Don't Look Up does not throw yeah. text on the screen. Well, it does. It does. It's, it th- throws like social media stuff. And no, it does bit. too, though. Like it, uh, at the very beginning, there's like the opening scene where – uh, they're like, is that a real department of the thing? Like, it's like oh, a planetary right. department. And they're like, right. yes, it is a real one. Here's the logo. Yes, you're right. So one of my notes for that was uh, for an Adam McKay project. I'm not sure if it ever breaks the fourth wall, but it does there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but the characters that I found most interesting and I think are like most important other than like the lead are the wife and Koshi. And the wife dies early and something big has to happen with Koshi which does so a lot of the film is not <laughs> them and the bit bi- my favorite scene I know like the big scene is when uh they go he and uh, Yusuke and the driver go back to her hometown but my favorite scene and the one that if I'm going to drop it in like the 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 award show can I guess? Yeah, you're going to get it. Is the bar scene? No, but that's a good one, the too. The bar one is great. The scenes between those two, which is the the lead, the, the Yusuke and Koshi, those are my favorite scenes and in the, the movie. The backseat of the car is the other one? Backseat yeah. of the car those is, are the two like, best. The, possibly the best scene, I shit you not, like, of the year. Yeah. it was. It's so good where uh, he's explaining, and there's a lot of, like, acknowledgement of, like, Koshi says, like, hey, I had feelings for your wife, and... Yusuke is just not confrontational. No. And he's kind of like afraid of opening that door. And eventually it comes to be like, okay, like they were sleeping together. Mm-hmm. And he's talking about how this is a, a story that she was working on. And he says like, and then it ends here. And then Koshi's like, yo, not to be weird. But that's not where it ends. Yeah. There's like she came up with more. And that's so fucked. I know. That's but, so hard. But like the two of them bond over it. Yeah, because I know. like he like because he so wanted loves, to know and yeah. he wanted to know the end of that story. And here's the here's like the thing about this movie is that I think this movie has the best story of all the candidates, at least the ones that I've seen so far. But maybe the best story of all this year is the story within the story because the story that they tell in the back seat. Oh is yeah. Like, that is movie incredible. That, that's what's so great about it though. That like he is not even for the sake of like someone I love came up with this. Actually, probably a lot of that is that, that like, he's like, uh, like Invested oddly like proud yeah. of the story, even though it was dictated to somebody else while having sex. Um, also like being productive during sex who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing that? Um, but she's she is having orgasms and writing like masterpieces while having sex. Uh, we can't do either. Some people of them. can't do either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, she was really impressive. <laughs> um, but 
The story is that story is so good. It's great. And when he I, well, let's not spoil that. No, like, yeah. But, but there's he, like a twist in that story, and I was like, oh my god, of course it was. Oh, she's good. <laughs> yeah, when when he was like, there's more to it, and uh, and what's his name? Uh, fuck the main character, Yusuke. Yusuke I think. Uh, was like. Really? I was like right there with him. I was like, okay, let's let's pull up a chair here. Yo, I love that scene. And I do like the scene at the bar. I, I just really like the dynamic between those two because it uh it deals with a canceled and complicated person mm-hmm. in a like a, a pretty authentic and believable way. Like this kid like ain't right. <laughs> yeah, this guy's got like some scummy qualities to yeah. him, but like he he genuinely seems like sorry about and, it, and like he like wishes he fucking yeah. weren't that way. And he's, he's not and working he, on it as well as he needs to. He's be. not working on it as well as he needs to, but he's like he's he's trying to like ask for help essentially. Yeah, or like is trying to be like, how can I be more like you? Like, can you explain to me like how I can be better? And when they first meet, the beginning of the film, so she brings him to this guy's play. And this guy's like also so fucked. Up. I know. Like, there's so many levels of like, holy shit. Like, yeah. This is so co- this is such a complicated story. People, people are fucking people, man. Like, I didn't. I was never like, oh, you motherfucker, to her. Mm-hmm. Right. I was like, this. I mean, she's not that. Like, one thing excuses the other, but this is someone who's like suffered immeasurable loss. Her, I'm saying. Right. Um of like her child and everything and she like genuinely fucking loves him like she like an hour or two after so he his flight gets canceled so he comes home and he sees her having sex with somebody else so he just leaves and like grabs a hotel and like an hour or two later she facetimes him and is like being all chummy with him and it's not some like i don't know like i not i don't think that she's putting on a show i think that she's like I don't know. I don't want to get into her brain. What do you What do you think? Like the central theme of this movie is, because uh, I, I have a one search for a search for understanding. Uh, yeah, That's very yeah, very vague though. Very vague. I think I think I kind of I, I got it here. Ca- uh, cars. Yes, sobs. The sob <laughs> commercial. <laughs> oh, the product placement. Oh. I was gonna say. I was For like, a I'm kind of glad. Dead brand. I'm kind of glad that it's a dead brand because otherwise it'd be like, oh man, this is just like a three hour long sob commercial. But yeah. famously, sob doesn't really exist anymore. So let's each tweet that like two or three times each leading up to the Oscars. I feel like this is such shameless product placement. Like one or two times, like you and I will each be like. The product placement in uh, the product placement for Saab is distracting. Um, the, the, the central theme of this movie is every character is avoiding and running from pain. Yo, Church. every single character Church. is avoiding and running from pain. Like the wife does it by having sex with with other people, and like she's running from the pain of losing a child. Uh, the the main character is running from like the pain of losing his wife mm-hmm. uh, and like running from and avoiding the pain of like confronting her. Uh, and that comes up as like he really challenges himself um, because he was so avoidant of contr- confronting her. He thinks that he killed her because the night that she died, he didn't want to go home because she yes. said she thought that she, he thought that she was going to confess. Yeah. And he thought it was, was going like, to change everything. We got to talk. So he didn't want to go home, and he wonders if he had gone home earlier, if he could have saved her. Uh, the the young kid, um, Yoshi? Uh, Koshi. Koshi. Uh, is running from, like, connection and, like, intimacy, I guess? Or, like, because he had it with... Uh, her. Uh, her. And I, I can't forget, I can't remember any of the names. Uh, her name is uh, Otto. 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 Okay. O T O. Had a connection with her. Can't find it with anybody else. So he's kind of like avoiding intimacy and just having sex with all these people. Yeah. And like not actually making connections with him. With them, the deaf woman is uh, like avoiding dancing. Yeah. Because after she had a miscarriage, 
she said that like it was like uncomfortable for her body to dance so she gets into acting so like almost every character in this movie is running from like some sort of pain you mentioned the deaf woman and oh and obviously the chauffeur yeah it, and she's like kind of like a ancillary character like you could have done this movie without her but i'm glad you brought her up because his plays this guy's doing some like next level shit on the plays he does plays where like different characters are speaking different language Mm -hmm. there's like a big screen behind them that just like has constantly changing subtitles because based on whatever the language is like that could be some real like get high and just have your mind blown there are four different languages that are uh no one's doing that in this play no one's doing that these days he has an insane process for like directing the plays which is kind of unbelievable to watch play out okay i'd be remiss if we didn't do some like light objectifying of the actor who plays yusuke his name is hidetoshi nishijima and we've talked about various articles of clothing belonging to certain people Mm -hmm. julianne moore that motherfucker owns the dress. Nobody looks better in a dress than Julianne Moore. I think it's specifically a sundress. A sundress. Just fantastic. Nobody looks better in a party t-shirt. dress. Oh, than, party dress than, than uh, Kelly Rohrbach. Yeah, that's right. Nobody looks better in a t-shirt or like button-down shirt than Jay Ellis. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you agree that Hidetoshi Nishijima owns the long sleeve shirt tea, yeah. oh my yeah. god yeah table reads i could not fucking pay and attention like, the table read scenes like fuck me up daddy and so like they're not skin tight long sleeve tees but you can tell that he's in shape oh yeah and oh, it's yeah. very impressive like you can see and he's not jacked like but you can see that he is has muscle definition in his arms like when he's cr- when he's like crossing his arms yeah at the table reads i it he's was distracting so it was he's distracting. So, like he is an extremely attractive <laughs> Product placement for Saab and guns. Very distracting. Oh, my movie. God. Uh, drive my car with, with guns. guns. And it's, it's just, just all his arms. Oh, yes. That's going to be an easy one. Uh, and anyone that doesn't actually take like hours of Photoshop is uh, going to be very easy. Uh, so I also wanted to bring up the song Drive My Car. So the song, this movie is named after the Beatles song Drive My Car. And famously why I don't know it. Okay, so I I was interested to know if you knew that song because it's tough to like you go up to a like a Beatles fan and be like, "Do you know Drive My Car?" which is like a hit, but everything that they did was a fucking hit. So people just might not know it. Uh it's a great song. As you get into the Beatles, Rubber Soul and Revolver are where they start to transition from like early rock and roll Beatles to like Druggy, druggy fucking cool shit and drive my car is like might be the quintessential like oh, something's kind of changing here song it leads off rubber soul it's a great song anyway i want to know if you knew it but uh the story is they wanted to have drive my car in the film but famously beatles songs are very expensive so it just didn't work out finance wise and i hate to I hate to pull the like judgmental like uh yeah pa broke ass you know what that is no inventing but you've been Anna. using broke ass a lot she calls people broke ass oh inventing Anna okay yo that it. show fucking rocks yeah I've heard yeah uh, uh dude I can't believe you're so broke ass for not watching <laughs> it but um the the movie can't win you 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 can't win if you if you <laughs> <laughs> are named after drive my car and like want to drive my could be one thing if they were like hey we didn't want that it's just like a little nod like baby driver has baby driver in the end credits yeah but i think it's a little too on the nose like i feel like i don't know drive my car the song but i it would have felt kind of out of place wouldn't it it in no way there isn't one second of this film where that song would fit that's what i'm saying <laughs> it's got it's like a real like cowbell rocker it would and not like, have and you can't do it at like the end credits because the end credits is like kind of somber and it's like it's supposed to be like a moment of reflection so it'd be so weird if there was just like a fucking cow i'm gonna redo ringing. the end credits so like the movie ends and bow to battle that would be so distracting i don't i didn't I don't even remember like a single second of music in this movie. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about music in the other one we're doing this week. But yeah, music not necessarily 
calling to me. There was like a, there was some like orchestral thing that was going on at one point that I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. Maybe it, maybe, maybe it was a, a case of like having to read the subtitles, being like fully focused on that and yeah. on the story. Sensory and on distraction. Like, and what, like the scenes were so beautiful that yeah, kind of. I'll tell you what though, this movie has been growing on me and I love like the acquiescing of when – you like something, somebody else loves it, and you talk about it for a little bit, and you're like, okay, fine, I love it too. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like the movie a lot more, having even had this conversation. Uh, but it's still, I would still, I try to do like a loose ranking, and I've got tiers right now, and I had this in the second tier, but the first tier was very small, the second tier was big, and the bottom tier. Like, the power of the dog is like, hey, can I have any friends down here? <laughs> no, just kidding. 